It's a war in Brown County. And uh, I don't like losing. I don't like losing. I've had students who have watched loved ones overdose. I've had students who have parents in jail. The overdose epidemic continues to ravage cities across America and right here in Indiana. More than 100,000 people died last year in America overdosing. A new film getting titled The uh, Addicts Wake getting a lot of attention. It focuses on the charming small community of Brown County. Behind the charming small town, also the devastating effect of heroin, meth, and opioid addiction. The award-winning director of the film, Michael Hussein, joining us now live in studio. So good to see you. Timing is everything. I think it was the producer that saw the special report that I did and said, hey, do you know about our film? And I didn't know about it. Um, so I want you to share a little bit about um, what you found in Brown County and why this documentary? Brown County, obviously, as you said, yeah. beautiful place, beautiful people, um, but it, it, it has devastated uh, that community. They, in 2017, they lost about six young men, and in a total county population of 15,000 people, that's a devastating hit. And, um, and so one of the young men who died uh, was the son of a pastor and the son of a school teacher. Everybody knew him. Yeah. His name was Caleb Joy. And uh, uh, our story hinges on what happened with Caleb, how the community reacted, and, and most importantly, how his family reacted. His um, mom and dad, instead of kind of going into a grief mm -hmm. shell that you might imagine, uh, decided to sort of speak what they were feeling and, and, and share and try and generate conversation. Mm -hmm. And when they did that, the, two of the big barriers to dealing with addiction issues are, are shame and stigma. And, and it really, because of who they were, they, it really dropped that down. And people started say, standing up in church and saying, yeah, we're dealing with this too. Newspaper articles. Um, the jails started looking at how can we start a rehabilitation process or, uh, while, while we have these people you know, essentially locked up. Uh, the schools started teaching differently mm. using social-emotional learning specifically towards drug, e drug education. So. Um, a lot of change generated by, by, by sort of the grace of that family. I thought it was interesting too. Just in the commercial break, we were able to talk a little bit about my special report and about that lo the newer law that's tougher. Um, and you had an interesting kind of connection there with one of the gentlemen um, who is featured in this story. Um, he sold drugs to someone who died. Yeah. That is what helped him change his life. But it was before the law was put into place, so he didn't get much prison or jail time. Tell me a little bit about that connection. No, he received it. I mean, he, he, he got, because of the, the way the Joys reacted, uh, mm. he, he was given some grace by the prosecutor wow. there. And, uh, uh, you know, grace meaning, you know, you, you get a bunch of probation time, but you have an opportunity to clean up your life. And, and if you do that, you can have a great life. And he does now. And that, that's sort of the success story is he's, he's a fantastic young man. Uh, he, he's got a house now, he's got a, a wife and a child and a, and a great job, and he's, he's everything you'd want in a community yeah. member. Yeah, I want to jump in there because I think that's the thing that's so frustrating, right? You had a, a, a prosecutor in that case who you gave him grace, and the family gave him grace, so he got probation. While other people, you know, there's a 19-year-old girl I know, she's in prison for eight years. They're the Dwayne Mahones of the world who were in prison for 20 years. Um, it's, I think people have a hard time understanding how we give grace to some people and maybe not grace to others. Oh, I, I, I would count myself in the, the same category. The, the issue really with that is, is, is a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. And, and so the level at which most people who are technically drug dealers, yes, I sell you this because we both use, um, you know, that's, a, that's habit supporting. You yes. know, you give me 10 bucks and I can just yes. go buy more. Drug kingpins, large dealers that we see in movies, that's not these people. And so uh, there's, a, there's a line there yeah. that has to be interpreted by prosecutors. Yeah, those are the ones, though, that you would want to go to prison for Absolutely. maybe 20 to 40 years. All right, I wish we had more time. But I know yeah. there's a screening last night. Um, you can watch the film now to, I think, Sunday yes. through your Facebook link. And then it goes more into these festivals where you guys are getting all kinds of awards. So right. we'll put the information up um, on our website on where you can see the film. And again, thank you so much. What an important topic. Thank you very much. Very timely. Yeah, Good to see you. you.